and welcome to this episode of When Friends Come Over. And today I'm wanting to speak with my friend Grace about the basics of communities. And uh, the reason that I wanted to speak with Grace about this particular topic is actually because we've been a part of an online community for about three years. Actually, this year, 2023, we were able to meet um, in Jakarta, where you're based in Indonesia. I guess when I first met you there, like in, in the flesh, it just felt like I'd known you for so long, which is true because we'd been a part of this online community. And I know you're background is so involved in communities and building communities and being a part of communities. And then on top of that, you are Indonesian. And that, to me, is one of the greatest communities because Indonesian people and Indonesian culture is such a beautiful culture. So thank you so much, Grace, for uh, being up for being on When Friends Come Over. Of course, I'm happy to be here. Happy to chat. So I wanted to start off by basically asking what does community mean to you or and why are you so passionate about it? Community for me is a is a place and a space for people to gather and share common values, um, values where they want to grow in, values that they want to dive deeper in. And so to me, um, I think being part of a community is also knowing that you're part of something bigger than yourself um, and knowing that you're not alone in your own life journey. And so mm -hmm. community played a really big role in my life and getting me through so many transitional seasons. And so that's why um, community is so important to me. Do you remember, I guess, the first community that you were ever a part of? Like, was that from quite a young age? And that's kind of what was ingrained in you? Yeah. So one of the first, like, I guess, really tight communities I was part of was when I was in college. And I think college was a time where I was, um, I think a lot of things get reshaped, gets broken down and reshaped um, when you're in college. And for me, that that happened in my first year of college. And it was just a time where I was really confused with myself, who I am, um, what kind of career direction I want to go into. I finally decided, it's a long story, but I finally decided that a, a community is something that I really did need. Like I was trying to figure things out myself, but I just couldn't do it. And I realized I probably needed to humble myself and try journeying with people. Mm. And so... Um, when I did that, I realized that there are so many blessings and benefits that come with being part of a community. Um, just having people journey alongside you and saying, it's okay that you are struggling a little bit here. It's okay that um, you feel like you're going at a slower pace right now. Um, just having someone kind of, kind of empathize with me uh, actually propelled me even farther um, into the goals that I wanted to mm. achieve. And so, yeah, I, I started having... Um, I think I started, I didn't start, but I participated in community uh, intensely as a college student. And then when I came back, I felt like I was I came coming back to Indonesia. I felt like I was lacking in that a lot and I was searching for it. And it wasn't something that was very common when I first came back from college. I'm not sure if this is a longer story, but is it okay? That oh, I yeah, that? go for it. Yeah. Um, so I got, I got married two years after um, I graduated from college. And so I got married at a pretty young age. And just to clarify, you went to college, I'm guessing overseas, because you said you came back. So where did you go to college? Yes, I went to the University of Michigan uh, in America. And then after four years, I came back. Um, I worked for a few years. And then two years later, I got married. And so I was one of the, I think I was the first one out of all my peers and my circle of friends that got married. Um, and so I was going through that transition alone. And then a year later, I gave birth to my first child. And so I was going through motherhood alone um, while everyone was partying. I was going through, like, I guess, like healing my body and, and how to take care of a baby and all those things on my own. And so I remember feeling really, really alone. And mm -hmm. the years before that, I was looking for a community to participate, to be part of. But um, as I said before, it wasn't that common here in Jakarta, Indonesia. And so long story short, out of kind of the growing pains of that, I realized like, I really, really need community. And so I started with two other girls who I knew were about to get married, but they were going through a transition that wasn't similar to me, but you know, why not just transition together? So it started with two or three girls um, just talking about our personal transitions on a weekly basis. And then they started inviting their friends. And so three, three of us became around 10 of us. And then by the end of the year, we had 25 girls that were all transitioning. <laughs> from like engagement to getting married to having their first child and then to having their second child 
And so um, it just became this whole community of people of women supporting each other in transitions. Mm. So after that, I started building more and more communities because I feel like people really need this Mm. um, support system. um, Thank you for sharing that. I I would love to know what you think from that and from building all of these communities now over the years. What would you say are some of the, I guess, key components that make a community attractive to be a part of? Like if if you could say maybe like three to five things you like, it needs to have this, this and this, which is what is going to magnetize other people and like to triple in it, you know, quadruple. I think number one is like a sense of belonging or you don't have to perform when you're here. Mm -hmm. Um, And so a sense of belong as in like, well, for me particularly, I, most of my communities were were built for people in transition, whether it's transitioning back to Jakarta or transitioning in, in your, in your life season. And so um, when I say belong, belonging, it means that you can transition however messy that looks, you're still welcomed here. And so there's that sense of belonging. I think number two, uh, as a leader, I feel like you, for me, when I'm leading, um, it's important to show interest with each and every member in your community. And so for me personally, I do one-on-ones with each person in my community to make sure they know that I see you, you're being cared for, um, and your story matters. And so like leadership for leadership wise, I I make sure that I show that one-on-one attention um, with my members. Um, I think the third thing is just having common values. And I feel like those values need to be articulated week to week to week. Um, I led a number of young adult communities and I had to kind of put my foot down in saying like, I know that we're all in our twenties and, you know, dating and looking for a spouse is kind of one of our priorities. But when you come here, hopefully we're focusing on a a particular growth and not here just to look for our spouse. I mean, if that happens along the way, that's fine, but hopefully that's not the first reason why you come in here. And so I feel like articulated values are really important in in the growth and the health of the community. And do you think that that's what also helps a community in longevity? Yeah. Oh, so interesting that you, 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 um, you asked me this question because if you asked me this three years ago, I wouldn't have, I would have had a different definition to now, Mm -hmm. but I think number one is consistency and, and meeting. Um, I think that drives the community to keep, um, keep on going. And I think as a leader, you have to be the one that drives the community, um, by example. And so I'm going to show up every single week here to learn, to grow in awareness, let's say, um, because if the leader doesn't show up, then the community is not going to show up, right? Mm. There is also those, so community doesn't just happen on the days that we say we will gather. It happens throughout the week. And so uh, I, for me, I, I do also make sure that there are certain conversations that are happening throughout the week, not just between me and my members, but also amongst the members as well. Um, whether that's through like a WhatsApp, WhatsApp text or um, dividing people into smaller communities of threes and having them check on each other throughout the week. Um, things like that is that community comes in seasons. And so mm-hmm. sometimes there are communities that maybe only last six months, they last five years, 10 years. Um, and I think as a leader, we have to be sensitive towards, is this a season for the community to end and mm-hmm. another to begin? Is this a season for multiplication? Um, or maybe does this, does this community like need some, some extra time together to keep growing and deepen themselves in a specific area? But do you think, I mean, just as you were saying about that, and, you know, I I just want to know your perspective on it, that, you know, you were saying that the leader has to kind of keep showing up and doing those things. I mean, that could that not cause burnout for the leader? Should that not be something that you're also mentoring other people within the community to to have that, you know, even if they're not here, they're what they're building is still a part of it. And so that to me, I'm just curious on like, you might be sick one week. And and if it all falls on the leader, then it becomes this, I guess, pyramid rather than a circle. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. You have identified a struggle that I've had the first like five years of leadership or leadership within a community um, because I was that type of leader where like I was like a leader needs to show up a leader needs to do this but then after a while I did get burned out um, and I realized you know what I need a team of leaders and so um, while I was building community I also had to have in mind like who are the next leaders that could take over um, or when I'm sick like you said um, they could just continue kind of the culture of the of the community um, so yeah, I, towards the 
latter half of me leading communities, um, I realized that I need to do this together with a few people. It can't just be me alone. Mm -hmm. And also having a community rely on one specific individual is not healthy um, from what I've experienced. So that definitely is key. Like having, having this mindset of, I need to grow other people that also share the same heart and can continue this after me. Mm. Well, I think that leads brilliantly to, I guess, the other aspect, because there are just so many um, nuances to communities, which I think uh, we could go into at different times, but this one is the basics of communities. So I thought it would be great to hear from your advice from building so many communities over the years in different spheres and circles. What would you say or what advice would you want to give to someone who is thinking of, you know, starting a community? And yeah, like what would be your one little bit of wisdom or just a couple of things of like, you want to do this, this, and it can be practical or it can be, you know, conceptual. Yeah. Um, I think the mission of why you want to build the community is important um, because that will drive you even through I love building communities, but there are times when I'm just like, I really don't feel like showing up this week. (laughs) And it has to be the mission, that mission of why I built in the first place that drives me. Um, And so I think being very clear on the mission of why you're building a community and not just for the sake of building a gathering that's so great that you can Instagram and show people. Mm. Um, So the mission of why you're building a community has to be articulated towards yourself. And usually that comes from your own story and your own pain points. Like mm. you didn't have this, therefore you want to create a space for this. Um, yeah, because I I didn't have uh, I didn't have people to kind of support me during my huge transitions of marriage and having my first kid, and and so I want to create a space for people as they're transitioning through those specific um, life stages, and so um, and and out of that, then I realized you know what transitioning back to Jakarta was really hard too, and. I felt like I didn't have anyone for that. And so now I want to create a space for that too. And so a lot of times the mission, um, I think our our life story gives us a clue towards what we are meant to build next. Mm. And so um, for me, the mission really matters. So the second point I would want to share is don't build on your own. Um, I think anytime, anytime I want to build something now in terms of a community or organization, Mm -hmm. Um, I actually try to share that dream with a few people and sometimes it's a hit and miss, but sometimes there are those rare times where I find someone who's like, that really speaks to me and I would want to build with you. And the thing, the building isn't like 70, 30, it's more 50, 50, or it's 33, 33, 33, or, um, 25% each. So it's finding those people that actually share those same values and that's that same mission. Um, Mm. so that the burden's not all on you. Yeah. Um, I felt the burnout with leaders, uh, with myself when I was in leadership. And I just don't feel like we're meant to build communities on our own. Yeah. Um, Is giving, you know, my podcast conversation guests a scenario. And so the scenario I want to give to you about communities is imagine you've been in a community for, say, 10 years. So you've been in it for a while. You've seen it evolve and change and grow but you really really recognize and you're maybe even a part of the leadership and things like that but you just really recognize that you have completely changed as a person and you've you've noticed that for a while and you've been noticing it for about a year what Mm. is some tips that you would want to and not saying that this community is good or bad but you as a person just recognize I need to shift and move on what would you say to someone who's going you know what, I don't actually have this next community set up of where I'm going to yet, but I really recognize I need to leave this one now. Um, that whole saying about, I got to get off on the bus. I got to get, get off the bus before yeah. another one I know is even coming. So something you would want to say to that person who wants to leave well and not just mm-hmm. kind of like fizzle to the back. You cannot lead greater than who you are. And if who you are needs a transition and that's what's healthy for you, I would say take that courageous step and do it. Um, but also leaving a community. Oh gosh, leaving a community for me is like leaving a relationship and it's Mm -hmm. really, really hard. Um, but to do it well, there are so many like little steps, but I think the one thing that I want to make sure that I do is honoring the the community or the people that I was with. And so honoring, like talking about how that person or that community has impacted my life is so important. And so as 
as I have transitioned um, from different communities, um, from different organizations, I always wanted to make sure that I honored my mentor or my leader well, and also honor the community that has been part of my life for that period of time. And so, yeah, I would say honor people well. Well, I mean, you know, I guess, again, it's one of those things that is easier said than done, but maybe to add to that, what would you say are some recognizable signs for someone to to know it's time that I leave this? It's no longer serving me. I'm no longer becoming a best version. Like, yeah, what would you say are some signs that it's time to move to another group or another community? Yeah. Well, for me, there is this inner, like, um, I don't know what you call it. It's not, it's not, maybe it is a little bit of frustration, but it, you're just feeling a little unsettled inside when you come. So for me, when I first built a community, it's full of excitement, full of mm. joy, full of like newness, full of um, let's really get to know each other, you know? And sometimes after a period of time, I feel like, okay, I think they're settled. There's a system in place. They actually can continue without me. And there were times when I chose to stay and I just felt so frustrated and what what brought me joy then was starting to frustrate me. And every little thing that was going wrong started to frustrate me too, um, because I'm, I'm a planner. And so I like things happening at a certain time. Um, and so I think that's one of the, one of the signs, like when something that used to bring you joy, then starts to frustrate you. I think there is a sign that there needs to be some sort of shift. Mm. Um, it's not always about leaving the community. It could be about restructuring the community or taking a different role within the community. Yeah. Like, you know, raising up leaders and then kind of stepping back and be their coach or their mentor. Uh, what has been a fail, a failure you've experienced from growing communities? Trying to do everything on my own. Sure. <laughs> uh, and Is this, that out this... of the perfection thing? Like, I, as you were saying that earlier, I was kind of like going, yeah, but just someone won't be able to do it as quickly or like that kind of sense of control over like, I'll just do it because no one else is going to step up and do it or they're not going to do it the way that I want them to do it. So I'll just do it. Is there a little bit of that that might play in part? Yeah, definitely. I, it's almost like it's faster if I just do it. Cause for me to like tell someone to do it, I need to communicate and they might get it wrong. Then I have to communicate it again and then get it frustrated at the person. Um, but there is all, it's also mixed in with this idea that a leader needs to serve. But then I think serving also, there's like so many de definitions that, that can come with that. So um, initially when I first started leading, I almost felt like, oh, I shouldn't burden people with um, doing things. Um, I should just do everything so that people can just, you know, exp I don't know, experience being served. Mm. Um, but so that was kind of my first idea of what it meant to be a good community leader. But then throughout the years, I realized, you know what, a strong community is when everyone gets a role within the community. Um, because then they feel like they're part of the community and they're just not, they're not just a spectator. Right. Right. And so, yeah. And so there, that's why there was like a huge shift between like leading, leading now, leading then and leading now. Mm. Okay. I want to ask you, because obviously people's lives are so full and expansive. A lot of people are a part of multiple communities. So there might be one where you feel like you are going through a transitional period and you're loving sharing with them. But then there's another one that you're a part of that's fully like, like, let's go for it. Let's challenge. Let's do this. And then there's obviously gyms and all of those kind of communities. Um, how would you say to someone to manage that really well? Because I think that you, you don't, you want to avoid burnout as such, and you want to be a part of these communities, but when, yeah, what's your thoughts on managing multiple, being a part of multiple communities? Yeah. Um, well, one mistake I made was leading, I was part of multiple community communities, and then I was leading all those communities. Um, <laughs> so I would say, if you are part of multiple communities, make sure there is a community where you're getting replenished as well as a community where you're giving out. Um, I made the mistake of leading all the communities that I was a part of and I got burnt out at the end. Um, and so now the way that I'm restructuring my life is um, I am taking a break from leading communities right now. So I'm actually replenishing myself with, with many other communities. Um, but it's just, you can only give out how much you put in. And so if you keep giving out, giving out, giving out out of actually a good heart, um, you will actually eventually become unhealthy and you will lead through that unhealthiness. And that's not good for the community as well. Mm. And so, 
yeah, community health is heavily, um, it, like leadership health plays a big role in community health. And so make sure as you lead, um, you're making sure that you replenish yourself. Uh, wrap up by saying what, or asking, what would you say in terms of like, is the most important community that every individual has? As in like, do you think that we should all have a very, you know, and maybe it's called different things, but I guess a, an inner circle community. So is that something that everyone should have, you know, introverts, extroverts, that everyone should have this like core knit of people that it takes it takes a long time to be able to get into that sphere. Um, you know, would that be considered a community to you? Yeah, I think there's a structured community, but then you also have your kind of friends organic, they, where they kind of organically come together. You don't have to set a time instead of mm. like a weekly schedule with them every week. Um, I think it's important to have both like a kind of your own inner circle of friend, of friends that kind of pull you forward in life, but also a new, like bigger community that, that adds different perspectives, um, into your life. And so, yeah, I would say it's super important. Um, well, for me, my most important community is my family because I need to make sure that I live out my personal values within my like nuclear family. Um, then aside from that is probably my, my immediate circle of um my inner circle of close friends there are only like three i think four or five of them um but these are friends that really live out um we share common values that are within our faith our belief um and also the way that we uh, want to live out our lives um and i feel like the third community the th the third type of community is kind of um that can shift it can sometimes be a fam a community that is focused on self-awareness. It can be a community that is um, for fitness, that helps me grow physically. Um, there are more external communities. But I think the most, for me, the most important community is my nuclear family and making sure that I live out my personal values in, in my home mm -hmm. um, and then extending that to my immediate, uh, my inner circle of friends and then to the other communities that I'm part of. Beautiful. All right. I want to ask you for anyone who feels, I guess, you know, alone or finds it really difficult to find a community, to meet people, to to not even necessarily start one, but maybe they've been to a bunch, they've tried out a bunch of communities that they thought would have aligned. Is there, I guess, any things that you would say to someone who's going, I just really struggle to find a community? Um, yeah. yeah. What, what would you think to, to that person? I mean, you know, obviously there's meetup groups around the world and, and things like that, but is there any encouragement that you would want to say to someone who's just really struggling to find that community? Yeah. Um, I do first want to say that being part, like choosing to be part of a community can be extremely vulnerable because you, you know, you're allowing yourself to be seen. Um, and so the fact that you want to join a community, I think is, is a incredibly like courageous step. Um, but when you struggle to look for a community, as I did, I, the first two years when I was in Indonesia, I started to notice a few people that are in my path that were also looking for a similar community. Um, and so with those two or three people, I just decided to form my own community because we were all kind of looking for the same thing. So why don't mm. the three of us just start something? Sure. Um, and so when that started, then we started to recognize other people that were also looking for this specific community. And so sometimes um, when you don't see what you like and you see it like two, three people that are looking for a similar thing, then why not just start it on your own? Right. And it doesn't, starting a community doesn't have to be like super structured or anything. It could just be grabbing coffee and setting time to just talk about that specific, growing in that specific space. Mm. Um, and after a while, I think structure usually would be helpful when your community grows bigger and bigger, like yeah. more than 10 people. Sure. And actually, I was just thinking about that as you were saying it on, you know, to anyone who may have been struggling. I, I know for me, something I've often just, I guess, done or, or seen, you know, when people are going out on, I'm, I'm single. So when I see people going out on dates and going on these adventures and things like that, or in couples or, or at these big dinner groups. I've just, I guess to me, if you love movies, then just take yourself to the movie. You may mm -hmm. meet other like-minded people. Or if you love going to coffee, just take yours. I think it, I I guess to me, it just reminds me that you've got to have a great community with yourself and be so comfortable and yeah. secure. And then you're just going to attract, yeah, other people like that for sure. Yeah, yeah. 
And I think I'm hearing from you, like just being true to, to what you enjoy, who you are. You know, if you like going to the movies then you can always build a community that's around watching great movies together and talking about it after. Yes. Um, so it's not, there isn't a one way of making a community. I feel like yeah. and if you're looking for one that's aligned to you and you don't see it, um, I feel like a lot of people are looking for what you are looking for as well. And sometimes it just takes one person that steps out and say, I'll host a space for this yeah. and see who comes away. And don't you think as well, I guess just was reminding me of, you know, maybe it's more out of the, you've been possibly been struggling. And I know I have because it was more of a comfort zone thing that I'm not even interested in pottery or painting or things like that, where actually I didn't even try. And mm -hmm. And it can easily turn you off from going to something if you think that people are going to be there and be experts uh, yeah. you know, at something. So I think it's a matter of, I guess it's just that getting out of your comfort zone to be more curious. And I think that's the other thing of being a part of multiple communities is beautiful because it makes you such more of a curious person. And I think no matter if you're, I, you know, actually, I probably shouldn't say this because I, I know being you know, more of an introvert person, I do find it a challenge to push myself to go to them. I definitely do. And then sometimes regret it. But then I have noticed the times where I guess you win some, you lose some, don't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. No, I've, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if this is off the record, but I've been part of some weird communities yeah. that I'm just like, well, this is not for me, but at least I know now I know yes. that, that's not for me, so. that you tried. <laughs> And hey, thank you so much, Grace. I think that's a great um, spot to wrap up on. But I know you and your amazing gift of leading communities, being a part of communities. There's so many different areas that we can uh, dive into. But I guess that was just a real overview of the basics of community and the importance of community and 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 um, yeah, how to navigate uh, leaving a community, starting a community. So we hope you got some, hope anyone listening or watching got some value from this. And thank you so much, Grace, for taking the time to um, share as well. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Had fun. Yeah.